Okay, uh, once again. Uh, uh, okay, once again, uh, good morning and good day to everyone, wherever you are. Uh, I hope that uh, everybody is still on track, that uh, at this very moment, we are having our subject uh, SCI 1, no? uh, entitled uh, Specialized Crime Investigation, one with legal medicine. So we are done with your midterm uh, period, and now we are proceeding with your uh, uh, finals. No? So we have to finish first your SCI 1, uh, before we proceed to uh, SCI two, no, uh, the month of uh, uh, the middle of uh, uh, April and uh, until uh, the end of the semester. So please be guided accordingly. So uh, no, uh, I was not able to uh, meet you no last week since uh, uh, I have to attend. Uh, uh, the wake, the wake of uh, my uh, grandmother, uh, who took care of me for so long and uh, molded me uh, as uh, a good person, like uh, all of you. Okay, so uh, uh, with that, no, let us uh, continue uh, our endeavor in this uh, semester as far as uh, SCI one with legal medicine is concerned. So last time we discussed chapter one and chapter two, and I hope that you are able to packet something you now that you will remember as far as the subject is concerned. So uh, in chapter two, you are able to discuss uh, the uh, general uh, uh, medical legal uh, considerations regarding a special crime investigation. No? So in chapter two, you were able to understand that uh, in uh, specialized crime investigation, uh, the intervention of medical legal uh, aspects is uh, important as far as uh, identification, no location, and evidence are concerned. Okay, as far as crime is concerned. So with that, uh, let us proceed then to the next topic in chapter three. And chapter three of the subject matter tackles uh, the PNP general uh, investigative procedure. It is called the general investigative procedure because uh, this is uh, applied uh, commonly in all uh, kinds of investigation. So commonly, sa lahat ng classing investigation as far as crime investigation is concerned these are the procedures accepted and legally established especially in the PNP organization so kung tanungin nyo paano naman ang NBI of course they have similar uh, similar approaches as far as criminal investigation is concerned but of course we have to understand that the PNP is the leading no leading investigative body no, in the Philippines, ang NBI is a specialized unit uh, as far as investigation is concerned. No, so pag merong krimen, commonly ang uh, leading jan, no, is the PNP who will conduct the investigation. No, uh, and again, uh, I do not forget that whenever there is a criminal or a specialized crime investigation. We have to always remember why we are conducting investigation. And for you to remember, do not forget the three fold aims of criminal investigation. That is to identify the guilty party, to locate the guilty party, and to provide evidence to prove the guilt of the guilty party. Yan lang naman yung purposes ng aim ng uh, any criminal investigation sa PNP man yan, sa NBI man yan, or any other investigative bodies. Okay? So, going back to chapter 3, as I said, it is all about the legally accepted procedures that uh, must be applied whenever 
uh, a criminal investigation or a crime investigation is being conducted in the PNP organization. No? So pag hindi mo ito sinunod, then uh, you might have violated the law or you might have violated the procedure and with that, you might face technical uh, uh, problems, especially in the presentation of evidence in court. They will question you. They will question the integrity of the evidence, the integrity of the investigator. And if the court have proved that you have violated these procedures, then all evidences submitted might be considered as invalid and illegal. With that, if it is illegal, then basically the court may decide to dismiss or acquit uh, dismiss the case or acquit the accused. So with that, dahil lang sa iyong pagpapabaya at hindi mo sinunod yung procedures established by uh, authorities, na yan lang ang dahilan kahit ang lakas ng ebidensya naging mali na because hindi mo sinunod yung tamang procedure. Ha? Kaya nga sinabi ko sa inyo noon that criminal investigation is an art. It is an art because you have to follow uh, uh, procedures. It is also a science because you have to use uh, the product of science like criminalistics or forensic science. So ang pagsunod sa procedures is nagsasabi that criminal investigation is an art. No? So pag investigator ka, you are binded by procedures. You cannot apply your own personal uh, procedure. You have to always refer to whatever existing procedures so that hindi ka magkamali. And with that, uh, hindi uh, maisasacrifice ang tinatawag na justice specifically on the part of the offended party. Okay? So, with that, that is our topic. In chapter 3, PNP, General Investigative Procedures. No? So, pag sinabing general again, it is applicable to all uh, crimes being investigated. Ito yung general no, na applicable na procedures. No? Okay? So, let us proceed. Okay? So, as you can see, no, uh, as you can see here in chapter three, entitled Pre PNP General Investigative Procedures. No, as I mentioned a while ago, these are general investigative procedures. Nag-investigate ka man ng uh, robbery, homicide, murder, uh, theft. Uh, these are applicable that you have to implement. So. Before we proceed, uh, as you can see in the learning outcomes, at the end of the chapter, the students are expected to implement properly the general investigative procedures uh, commonly applicable when dealing to the investigation of crimes. Discuss the different general investigative procedures in the PNP. And lastly, to recognize the significance of the general investigative procedures, recognize the significance of general investigative procedures in the investigation of crimes. Important ba ang uh, general investigative procedures? Of course, just remember, if there are no fixed and established uh, procedures, then what will happen? No, wala tayong sinusundan na standard. Pag walang standards, then basically, uh, makakaroon tayo ng kanya-kanyang procedure, then basically, magiging magulo ang lahat. Okay? At ang malugi is, of course, the offended party. Okay? So, with that, uh, the purpose of this investigative procedure or general investigative procedure uh, is it aims to... Uh, it aims to come up with a definite investigative procedures on a specific uh, cases from the time the incident happened until the case is hired. 
Okay. Okay, so once again, the purpose of the general investigative procedure is to come up with a definite. So pag sinabing definite, exact. No? Hindi yung uh, vague or hindi clear. So pag sinabing definite, it is a clear investigative procedure that is applicable to specific cases from the time the incident happened and until the case is filed. No? So remember that. So the procedures that we are talking about, these general procedures are the following. So nag-uumpisa ito, remember, as from the time the incident happens. So sa lahat ng investigation, commonly nag start yan. Uh, basically, ang umpisa is uh, when there is an incident reported or when there is a crime discovered. No? Then that is the start that investigation will be uh, implemented. But of course, as I mentioned before, investigate investigation or crime or criminal investigation starts uh, upon the arrival of the first responders at the crime scene. Yeah. Pero bago mag-respond yung uh, first responders sa crime scene, uh, there should be an incident reported. Kasi paano malalaman ng police yan? Kaya pag hindi na report ang isang crime, then yan yung tinatawag na dark figures of crime. So hindi nakikita yan. No? Kasi hindi na i-report. Or, pwede ang isang crime is discovered. Yeah. Discovered. Okay? So, dyan tayo mag-uumpisa. Ano ang procedure when there is an incident reported? Dyan tayo mag-uumpisa hanggang sa huli. Okay? So, with that, okay. So, let us then proceed on the procedures. First is upon receipt of call or walk-in complainants. So, always remember that uh, the police cannot uh, just conduct investigation if there is no report or there is no knowledge about the crime that is uh, being uh, committed or uh, in the progress of commission. No? So upon receipt of a call or a walk-in complaint or complainant, what will be the procedure that you will do? The duty desk officer shall record the time it was reported. Uh, gamit mo ang uh, uh, police blotter. Get the identity of the caller or complainant. Get the place of the incident. Get the nature of the incident. What crime involved? No. Get or killing, shooting, stabbing. Yeah, nature of the incident. Get the number of the victim for future uh, reference. Record a brief synopsis of the incident. So pag sinabi mong synopsis, the summary of the incident, the fact of the case. Direct the nearest mobile car or beat patrollers or the nearest police precinct to act as first responders equipped with police line to secure the place of incident and a camera and inform the duty investigator Preferably one team of investigators. Yeah. When the first responder is at the crime scene, what will the first responder should do? The first responder shall perform his or her duty as is stated in protocol number four. Yeah, alam nyo na yung protocol number four. In addition, check the condition of the victim while the other members of the first responders shall simultaneously secure the area by putting a police line or any material in the absence of a police line like rope, straw, and the likes. Okay? Yeah. So, unang una, when you're at the crime scene, you have to secure the victim if that is there is a victim, no? especially in cases of homicide, physical injuries, and so forth, and so on. Ah, 
hindi yung uh, cordon de crime sin agad-agad. Ang unang gawin is to save lives. Yeah. So you have to check uh, the victim. Then bring him to the nearest uh, hospital or clinic. Okay? If in serious condition, bring the victim immediately to the nearest hospital uh, using emergency services. Number two, Photograph and make a sketch of the victim if the victim is dead. And remember this, only a medical legal officer can declare a person or a victim is dead as far as crime is concerned or if it's essential. Get the dying declaration if it is possible. If necessary, ask three questions. What are the three questions na pwede mong kunin pag kumukuha ka ng dying declaration? Ano ang pangalan at address mo? Kilala mo ba ang gumawa nito sa iyo? Sa pakiramdam mo ba ay ikakamatay mo ang tinamomong sugat? So those are the three questions that you will ask whenever you wish or whenever dying declaration is necessary. However, if there is still a chance to ask more questions, then follow-up should be done. The statement once reduced into writing, shall be duly signed by or with the mark of the victim. If not in serious condition, what should you do? Bring the victim immediately to the nearest hospital using emergency services. Get the identity and other data of the victim and get initial interview from the victim. Kaya dapat meron kang notebook. Yeah. The other members of the first responders shall remain at the crime scene to secure the premises pag nagdala ka ng victim sa hospital. Hindi pwedeng iwan mo ang crime scene. Okay? If the suspect is arrested at the scene, yeah, get the names of the persons who turned over or arrested the suspect, isolate the arrested suspect and separate them from any probable witness of the incident. Record what time the suspect was arrested. Wait for the investigators to interview the suspect. Remember this, ang first responder is ibayan sa investigating team or the IOC or the so-called investigators on case. Ibayan. So ang first responders, meron siyang sariling function. Pero after which, kailangan niyang i-turn over kung ano mang na-collect na evidence, i-turn over yung crime scene sa investigating team. Okay? Mm. If the suspect volunteers any statement, take note of the time, location, and circumstances of the statement. That's why you have to have your notebook. Investigation procedure at the crime scene. Yan. Ito na. Uh, ang first responder commonly, no, basically, ang gagawin lang ng first responder Okay, so uh, uh, in the investigation procedure at the crime scene, uh, by the sino nang gagawa dito, it is the IOC or the investigating team. Upon arrival at the crime scene, the investigating team received the crime scene from the first responder. Record the time or, or date of arrival at the crime scene. Location of the scene, condition of the weather, condition and type of lighting, direction of wind, and visibility. Photograph and or video the entire crime scene. Before entering the crime scene, all investigators must put on surgical gloves. Yan yung isang universal uh, rule in entering the crime scene. Bago ka pumasok, bago mo pasukin ang crime scene, you have to wear gloves. Yeah. Before touching, of course, you, no need for me to discuss why you have to wear gloves. That is to protect the crime scene from any alteration whenever you touch something, especially your fingerprint. No? Before touching or moving any object at the crime scene, in a homicide or murder case, determine the first the status of the victim, whether he is still alive or already dead. 
Sabi ko nga, uh, the one that have final say, an official say, if a person is dead, is a physician or a medical legal officer. Yeah, that's why if there is a sign of uh, uh, life, you have to bring him to the nearest hospital or clinic. Use your discretion. No, Discretion is the wise use of judgment. One's judgment. If the head is 10 kilometers away from the body, then basically common sense will tell you that the victim is dead. No? So if the victim is alive, the investigator should exert effort to gather information from the victim himself regarding the circumstance of the crime, while a member of the team or someone must call an ambulance from the nearest hospital. Before removing the victim, mark, sketch, and photograph his or her relative position. Yeah, do not forget that. Before removing the victim, mark, sketch, and photograph his or her relative position. Only a coroner or a medical examiner shall remove the dead body unless unusual circumstances justify its immediate removal. Uh, yeah. Ikong uh, masasagasahan yan sa uh, kalsada or uh, mahuhulog yung uh, bangkay pag hindi inalis uh, or uh, tatangayin ng tubig pag hindi inalis then you have to remove or else it only the medical examiner who shall remove the dead body. Okay? Yan. Hindi basta-basta alisin yan. Okay? Designate a member of the team or as other policemen or responsible persons to stand watch and secure the scene and permit only authorized person to enter the same. Kaya nga you have to maintain one exit and one entrance sa crime scene pag kinordon na yan. Okay? Identify and retain for questioning the person who first notified the police and other possible witnesses. Determine the assailant through inquiry or observe him if his identity is immediately apparent. Arrest him if he is still in the vicinity. Separate witnesses in order to get independent statements. Kailangan yan. Pag maraming witnesses, huwag <clears throat> mo silang ilagay sa isang selda or uh, room kasi baka mag uh, ang mga yan or uh, mag-conspire baka sabihin nila ang isang statement nila that is why you have to put them separately so that if you ask them questions then uh, uh, there is the big possibility that they will not uh, say the same or they will not sing uh, the same song okay so there are seven s of crime scene investigation uh, that to summarize everything securing the crime scene Separating the witnesses, scanning the scene, seeing the scene, sketching the scene, searching for evidence, and securing and collecting the evidence. Those are the seven S of crime scene investigation. Other term for crime scene investigation is SOCO, or scene of the crime, or scene of crime operations. Okay? General crime scene processing structure. Ano ang gagawin mo? Initial scene assessment. So pagpasok mo doon, you assess kung gaano kalawak yung crime scene, saan ang primary crime scene, saan ang secondary crime scene, at saan yung extended crime scene. So kailangan estimate mo gaano kalawak ang crime scene. Ano ang crime scene? Saan ang crime scene? Documentation of physical evidence is very important through photograph, sketching. Yeah. And collection of physical evidence is very important. You cannot collect an evidence if it is not yet documented. Kaya nga doon sa uh, golden rules in uh, crime scene investigation, do not touch, alter, or move any object at the crime scene unless it is properly marked, sketched, measured, and or 
photographed. Yan. So before you collect, you have to document it. For what kailang, bakit kailangan mong i-document ang isang bagay? Number one, that is to preserve the evidence. Number two, that is for purposes of uh, evidence in court. And also for purposes of laboratory examination. Number five, packaging and preservation of physical evidence is very important. So you, can, you just not just collect, but you have to package it. You have to preserve it again for purposes of laboratory examination, for purposes of evidence in court. And of course, you can do crime scene reconstruction. You can you do crime scene reconstruction based on the collected uh, evidence and information. Okay? Yeah. Pag sinabing reconstruction, pwede kang pumunta doon to simulate kung ano ang possible na nangyari. Saan ang location ng shooter? Saan ang location ng uh, uh, possible na suspect? Or sa paano siya pumasok? Saan siya nag-exit? And so forth and so on. Okay? The four primary methods of documentation of physical evidence, we have reports and note-taking, photographs, videography. Yan, pag nagbibideo ka, kailisin mo yung sounds, you mute it. Then, crime scene is sketching and mapping. Ang mapping, again, is that is crime scene measurement. Kasakasama yan ng sketching. Okay? Hmm. Okay. So, next is uh, uh, recording the crime scene. Investigation begins the process of recording pertinent facts and details of the investigation the moment he arrives at the crime scene. He should record the time when he was initially notified prior to his arrival. He also writes down the identification of persons involved and what is initially so. He should also draw a basic sketch of the crime scene and takes the initial photograph. This is to ensure that image of the crime scene is recorded before any occurrence that disturbs the scene. As a rule, do not touch, alter, or remove anything at the crime scene until the evidence has been processed through notes, sketches, and photographed with proper measurements. Yan, ang pag, pag sinabing record the crime scene, yan yung gagawin mo. How to record the crime scene? You read it. Yeah. Okay? All right. Next is searching for evidence. Ito yung gagawin. No? So, ano yung mga ginagawa sa crime scene? Upon arrival of the crime scene, ito ang gagawin. Second, you have to record the crime scene. Third, you have to search for evidence. Okay? So, sa crime scene pa tayo. Okay? Each crime is different according to the physical nature of the scene and the crime of offense or crime or offense involved. So, dyan nakadepende ang search of evidence. Yeah. Consequently, the scene is processed in accordance with the prevailing physical characteristics of the crime scene or the scene and with the need to develop essential evidential facts peculiar to the offense. A general survey of the scene is always made, however, to note the location of obvious traces of action, the probable entry, exit, and entry, other term for entry is ingress ingress then exit is egress egress as in eg egress point used by the offenders and the size and shape of the area involved yan so bago ka mag search ng evidence kailangan mong is, is survey ang area okay sabi ko nga you have to establish the primary crime scene the secondary and the extended crime scene okay All right. Next, number two. Number two, in the rooms, buildings, and small outdoor areas, a systematic search of evidence is initiated. In the interest of uniformity, it is recommended that the clockwise movement be used. Clockwise movement. So, ano ang clockwise? Yeah. 
So, alam nyo naman, ang clock is moving like that. Yan, like that. Yan. So, pag uh, ito yung crime scene, then you have to start there, then you search clockwise, going to your right if you are facing it. Okay? All right. Next. The investigator examines each item encountered on the floor, walls, and ceiling to locate anything that may be of evidentiary value. You should give particular attention to fragile evidence. Yan. Ang mga fragile is talagang uh, pag hinawakan mo pwedeng masira. Yan. Yan yung madaling masirang evidence, especially biological evidence. That may be destroyed or contaminated if it is not collected when discovered. Yan. Uh, you have to collect them immediately. If any doubt exists as to the value of an item, treat it as evidence until proven otherwise. Yan. So pag meron kang nakitang parang hindi ito related na evidence, you just collect. Kaya sabi niya, collect and collect and select the best. Ensure that the item or area where latent fingerprints may be present is closely examined and that action is taken to develop the prints. So do not forget, I know you have uh, knowledge regarding uh, uh, fingerprint. Carefully protect any impression or evidentiary value in surfaces conducive to making cast or molds. Yan. Yan yung paggawa ng molds. Anong ginagamit sa paggawa ng molds? Plaster of Paris. If possible, photograph the impression and make a cast or mold. Note stains, note stains, spots, and pools of liquid within the scene and treat them as evidence. No? The stains, spots, and pools of liquid. Number eight, treat as evidence all other items such as hair, fibers, and earth particles foreign to the area in which they are found. For example, Matter found under the victim's fingerprints. No? Yeah. Proceed systematically and uninterruptedly to the conclusion of the processing of the scene. The search for evidence is initially completed when after a thorough examination of the scene, the rough sketch is necessary, a photograph and investigative notes have been completed and the investigators has returned to the point from which the search began. Yeah. Okay. Further, search may be necessary after the evidence and the statements obtained have been evaluated. In large outdoor areas, kasi ang crime scene merong indoor, outdoor. Yeah. It is advisable to divide the area into strips about four feet wide. Four feet wide. Yeah. Kasi alam nyo, ang search for evidence merong... Uh, uh, techniques na, in, na ina apply dyan. We will uh, we will see them later. No? So in large outdoor areas, you know, example, 500 uh, uh, square meters, one hectare. So you have to divide it uh, into strips about four feet wide. The policeman will first search the strip on his left. Yeah. The first search the strip on his left. Yeah. Kung ano ang hinaharap mo, yan ang left mo. As he faces the scene and the adjoining strips as follows. So do not forget that procedure. Eh? So ang strips na sinasabi dyan, baka hindi nyo na naman naintindihan. Yan, meron kasing yan, ganyan. O, pag malawak yan, hatiin mo yan ng apat. Yan. So kung andito ka nakatayo, yan, you're facing your left, dito ka mag-umpisang mag-search. Yan, then... The adjacent. Pwede mo na ang umpisaan sa iba. Okay? Do not forget that. Next. Procedure. In the search of evidence, it may be advisable to make a search beyond the area considered to be the immediate scene of this incident or crime. Yan. Pwede, pwede kang lumayo. No, wag kang maglimit lang sa isang area, pwede mong i-extend ang pag-search mo. Malay mo, may naiwan doon na evidence. Example, 
Tumakbo yung uh, suspect, tinapon niya doon yung evidence. Okay? Yan. Number 13. After completing the search of the scene, the investigators examines the object of persons actually attacked by the offender. For example, a ripped safe. Yan, sa robbery. A desk drawer that has been pried open or a room from which items has been stolen would be processed after the remainder of the scene has been examined for the traces of the offender. In a homicide case, the position of the victim. Pag sinabing homicide, general term yan. Homicide case may refer to homicide, murder, parricide, or infanticide. So yan yung pag sinamit mo ang homicide in general, as a general term. So in homicide case, the position of the victim should be outlined with a chalk or any other suitable material, whether in ang charcoal, before the body is removed from the scene. Yeah. If the victim has been pronounced dead by a doctor or is obviously dead, it is usually advisable to examine the body, the clothing, and the area under the body after the remainder of the scene has been searched. Yeah. So pag natapos ka nang mag-search sa ibang area sa crime scene, yan, pwede mo naman ang i-examine yung uh, uh, victim himself or herself, yung kanyang body. Ah? Yan, the underneath, maka meron kang makuha. This is to enable the policeman or investigator to evaluate all objects of, of special interest in the light of all other evidence found at the crime scene. So after the search of evidence, you have now to proceed on the collection of evidence. This is accomplished after the search is completed. The rough and the finished sketch and photographs taken, fragile evidence should be collected as they are found. All firearms found to, the, to have tampered serial numbers shall be automatically subjected to macro etching at the PNP crime laboratory. A corresponding request to the Firearms and Explosives Office must be made by verific verification processes. Yeah. Okay. Pakibasa na lang yan. After collection of evidence, there is proper collection of evidence. We will discuss them later one by one. No. After collection, you have to mark the evidence. So remember, huh? the processes and the crime scene processes. Upon arrival of the upon arrival of the first responder at the crime scene, uh, and arrival of the uh, investigating team, no. Then after that, another process at the crime scene is the recording. Next is the search for evidence, and after search for evidence is to collect, no, collecting of evidence. Okay. Then after collecting, after we have collected the evidence, you mark the evidence. So how to mark any physical evidence obtained must be marked or tagged before it has it must be submitted uh, to the evidence custodian. So merong evidence custodian tayo. These are information to ensure anong mga markings na nilalagay. These are information to ensure that the items can be identified by the collector at any time in the future. Kasi pag hindi mo markahan yan, baka makalimutan mo. Kaya nakalagay dyan, pangalan ng uh, uh, nag-collect, date, at anong item yan. yan. Yan ang nakalagay sa mark. Pwede mong markahan yan manually. Ha? Gamit ang pen. At pwede rin maglagay ng tag. No? Alam nyo naman ang tag. Okay? Markings on the specimen must at least contain the following. Yan. So sometimes, uh, ah, Merong nilalagay na markings. So ano ang dapat nakalagay sa markings mo? Exhibit case number. Initials or signature of the collecting officer. Initials. Ha? So pag ang uh, pangalan mo is uh, Neil Bryan of Gallon, then uh, pilagay mo doon NBO. Yan ang initial mo, then signature of the collecting officer. Then time and date of collection. Importante yung tatlong yan. Exhibit number. Or soko. Uh, number 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. Exhibit number, then initials, and the time and date of collection. These are the very important content 
of markings of evidence. Note, it is important to note that the place or location, so dito walang place, so pwede mo ring include ang place or location where the evidence was collected. Okay? So after marking of evidence, the next is evaluation of evidence. Each item of evidence must be evaluated in relation to all of the evidence individually and collectively. If necessary, these pieces of evidence must be subjected to crime laboratory examination. Example, firearms for ballistics examination, hair strands for hair examination, and the like. Okay? So you have to evaluate the evidence. Then preserve of preservation of evidence. Yeah. It is the investigator's responsibility to ensure that every precaution is exercised to preserve physical evidence in the state in which it was recovered or obtained until it is released to the evidence custodian. Yeah. Kaya nga, paano mo i-preserve ang blood? Yan, ilagay mo ito sa vials or container, pag liquid yan. Okay? So, evidence must be preserved properly bago mo ito ibigay sa evidence custodian. Yan. So, pag binigay mo sa evidence custodian, i-receive ng evidence custodian, then from the evidence custodian, dadalhin sa laboratory, Pag-receive ng uh, laboratory technician sa evidence na yan ha? at pag na-document uh, mo yung receipt of evidence from one authority, from one person to another, yan yung tinatawag nating chain of custody. Okay? Chain of custody. Okay, so after uh, uh, search, collection, and evaluation of evidence and preservation of evidence, now, uh, all collected evidence can only be released upon order of the court. So always remember this, uh, ang isang evidence collected and preserved, i-re-release mo lang yan or ibibigay mo lang yan ang evidence na yan when there is an order of the court or prosecutor as the case may be. Do not forget that. Okay? So pag ikaw ang evidence custodian, or laboratory custodian or uh, technician pag may humingi sa isang evidence hindi mo pwedeng ibigay yan unless there is an order from the court or prosecutor as the case may be then in the uh, conduct of crime scene investigation also as far as evidence are concerned chain of custody or sometimes called as chains of possession must be uh, implemented. So, how do you conduct or how do you implement chain of custody? Kasi iyan ang importante. Uh, a list of all persons who come into possession of an item of evidence, continuity of possession, or the chain of custody must be established whenever evidence is presented in court as an exhibit. Adherence to standard procedures in recording the location of evidence, marking it for identification, and completing evidence submission forms for laboratory analysis is critical to chain of custody. Every person who handled or examined the evidence and where it is all items must be accounted for. As a rule, all seized evidence must be in the custody of the evidence custodian and deposited in the evidence room or designated place for safe keeping. Yeah. So always remember this, ang chain of custody, kailangan mong uh, i-take note no? uh, kung sino ang mga tao na nag-handle ng mga evidence. From the time of collection, uh, apunta sa evidence custodian, from the evidence custodian to the laboratory technician, yan, at kung sino pa ang mag ng evidence, kailangan naka-list yan. Okay? Yan. Pag ginawa mo yan, na-account kung sino-sino ang humahawak at humawak sa evidence, yan ang tinatawag nating chain of custody. Yan. Kasi tatanungin yan sa korte. No? Ah? 
from the crime scene, sino ang unang humawak sa evidence? It is the evidence custodian. From the evidence custodian, sino ang humawak? This is a laboratory examiner. Yeah, and so forth and so on. Kailangan nakalist yan, nakadocument yan. Okay? Yan ang change of custody or change of, or change of position. Transmittal, or the next topic is the transmittal of evidence to the crime laboratory. Yan, kasi ang mga, la, sometimes mostly ang mga physical evidence, talagang sinasubject yan for laboratory examination. Sabi ko nga kanina, bakit mo kailangang i-preserve ang isang evidence That is number one for purposes of laboratory examination. Number two for purposes of evidence in court. So, transmittal of evidence to the crime laboratory. Proper handling of physical evidence is necessary to obtain the maximum possible information upon which scientific examination shall be based and to prevent exclusion as evidence in court. Uh, The specimen which truly represent the material found at the crime scene unaltered, unspoiled, or otherwise unexchanged in handling will provide more and better information upon examination. Legal requirements make it necessary to account for all physical evidence, pieces of evidence from the time it is collected until it is presented in court. With this in mind, The following principles should be observed in handling all types of evidence. Number one, the evidence should reach the laboratory in same condition as when it was found as much as possible. The quantity of a specimen should be adequate. Even with the best equipment available, good result cannot be obtained from insufficient specimen. Yeah. Okay? So, kailangang uh, sufficient yung uh, specimen. Katulad sa dugo, kailangang uh, meron siyang uh, sufficient uh, number or uh, measurement or volume. Okay? Katulad din sa buhok, uh, meron ding sufficient na kailangan. Kung isa lang, kulang yan. Okay? Submit a known or standard specimen for comparison purposes. Yan. Known or standard specimen. Okay? So, example, pag semen ang uh, na-preserve mo at dinala sa laboratory, kailangan mag-produce ka ng standard specimen. Example, pag may suspect ka, yeah, let him produce a semen of his own. Then, compare it with the semen uh, that is from the collected from the crime scene. Kailangan yan. Kasi pag walang standard walang known specimen, then ano ang gagawin mo dyan? Wala kang pagkukumparahan. Okay? So, keep each uh, specimen separate from others so that to avoid contamination. Meron tayong tinatawag na MAC or MAC to avoid mutilation, uh, uh, alteration, and contamination. Wrap and seal in individual packages when necessary. Mark or label each of evidence for positive identification. The chain of custody of evidence must be maintained. Account for evidence from time it is collected until it is produced in court. Okay, any break in this chain of custody may make the material inadmissible as evidence in court. Kaya kailangan uh, proper yung chain of custody. Kailangan nakalis. A document that the evidence came from the collecting officer, papunta sa evidence custodian. From the evidence custodian, pagkailangan ng laboratory examination ay from the evidence custodian to the laboratory technician. Yan. From the laboratory technician, babalik yan sa evidence custodian. Okay? So, hindi pwedeng ang evidence in kung sino-sino ang hahawang. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng chain of custody. Hindi yung kung sino-sino ang pwedeng humawag sa evidence. Or else, as, as mentioned here, the evidence will make the materials or any break on the chain of custody may make the material inadmissible as evidence in court. Pag inadmissible ang isang evidence, then walang silbiyan. Okay? So, additional uh, uh, inputs. No? 
as far as uh, the search of evidence are concerned, is we have methods of crime scene search. What is the objective of crime scene search? To systematically look for evidence that may prove useful in establishing that a crime has been committed and to determine what method of operation the perpetrator may have used. There are three basic premises to be considered when searching. The best search option are often the most difficult and time consuming. You cannot over document the physical evidence and there is only one chance to perform the job properly. And there are types of crime scene that you have to search. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, these are the types of crime scene na pwede mong search. Number one, indoor crime scene. Indoor, sa loob ng building. Yan. Outdoor, outside a structure. Sa labas, in an open space. Continuing or running crime scene. Yan. Kasi meron kasing crime scene, ginawa niya yung crime dito. Ah, then, uh, uh, pumunta na naman sa isang area, gumawa ng crime. No? At meron din tang tinatawag na continuous crime. No? Daytime o crime scene. Yan. Pag maliwanag, that is daytime. Pag ang crime is nangyari sa gabi, then the crime scene is night crime scene. Then meron din tayong primary crime scene. Ang primary crime scene is kung saan mismo ginawa yung krimen. The direct place where the crime has been committed. Ang secondary crime scene, yan, is... Uh, uh, the extended part of the primary crime scene. No? Or pwede rin, ang secondary crime scene, sa example, pinatay yung tao sa isang area. Then, kinuha yung uh, corpse or yung cadaver or yung bangkay, dinala sa isang area. So, kung saan mo natagpuan yung tao, that is the secondary crime scene and the primary crime scene is yung kung saan siya unang pinatay or kung saan siya pinatay. Okay? So, these are the types of crime scene that you may encounter. No? Yeah. Kahit maraming klase yan, but iisa pa rin yan, crime scene pa rin lahat. Okay, so there are types of crime scene search patterns. So ito yung mga search patterns na pwede mong gamitin when you are searching for uh, evidence. Number one is the lane or strip search. Yan, lane. So mag-start yung mga searchers dito. Yan, sus magsusunod-sunod sila dito. Yeah, then they will move like that. They will end there. Okay? Number two is the line search. Line naman because magpila lahat ng mga searchers dito. Yeah. Then they will move like that. Okay? Kaya nga line. They will make a line. Okay? Then the double strip or double lane or grid search. The searchers will start here. Yeah. Move there. Parang ito rin. Pero ito is double, kaya nga pa, yan. Okay? So, pagpunta nila dito, ulitin na naman nila yan. Yan. Kaya double. Okay? Then, number four is spiral search. Yan. Uh, ang spiral pwedeng uh, magumpisa ka dito sa inward or pwedeng magumpisa ka dito sa loob, outward. Yan. Okay? So, mas maganda dito. Okay? Sa labas, out inward papasok ito palabas pag dito ka mag-umpisa okay yan ang wheel or pie method yan like a pie you start at the center then move backward itong wheel commonly yan na i-apply in bombing incident yan dito mag-umpisa kung dito ang uh, bomb site kung saan sumabog then you start there kasi ang bombing Pag dito yung bomba, sumabog yan ang mga particles or evidence pag ganyan yan. Okay? Then ito, ang sector or zone quadrant, ginagamit yan pag malaki-laki yung uh, crime scene. Ang ginagamit is, ang applicable is the sector, zone or quadrant search pattern. So ang malaking area, hati-hatiin mo yan. At yung hinati mo, pwede mo ring hatiin yan. At dito sa uh, pattern na ito, Pwede mong i-apply ang mga ibang klase ng patterns in each quadrant. So, yan. So, pwede, pag hinati mo, pwede mo ulit hatiin yan. yan. So, ulitin ko, ina-apply yan in big or huge crime scene. So, yan yung mga common uh, crime scene search patterns. Okay?
Then procedures on taking photographs. Overall photos of the scene are taken to show the approach to the area, street signs and the street light locations in relation to the actual scene. Pictures should also be taken of every room in the house, even if the relationship to the crime scene is not readily apparent. Kaya nga sa photography, shoot and shoot and select the best. Okay. Photograph the scene in a clockwise pattern before altering the body position, only other evidence. Photograph the scene for at least two opposite corners, but from all four corners is even better. This way, nothing is missed or hidden from the view by intervening objects. Photograph the body and the immediate vicinity around the body. If you have a camera, boom, take pictures from ceiling height down the victim and other evidence. This perspective often shows things missed when viewed from the ground or eye level. Keep a photo log. Yeah. Procedures on making a sketch, crime scene sketch. To establish admissibility, the investigators must, personal, must have personal observation of the data in question. In other words, the sketch must be sponsored or verified. So, kailangan andun ka sa crime scene bago ka sketch Reminders or reminder, sketches are not a substitute for notes or photos. They are but a supplement to them. Always remember that. So ang sketch alone will not stand alone, but kailangan and then ang notes at saka photograph. Okay? Types of sketches that you can encounter, floor plan or bird's eye view. Yeah. Floor plan. Especially sa indoor crime scene. Okay? Yeah. Kapag gagawa ka, ah, pwede kang gumamit ng legend. Yeah. Numbers, figures, shapes, pwede mong gamitin as legend. Yan ang floor plan. Kikita niya yan. 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 Case number 92, yan yung case number, place, uh, date, uh, name of the sketcher. Okay? Ang isa rin is elevation drawing. Yan, may measurement yan. Elevation. Kaano kalayo yung uh, isang evidence sa wall or any object. Cross projection or exploded view. Yan, parang yung uh, isang room is uh, uh, binuksan mo. Parang bumung nagbukas ka ng isang box. Yan. Okay? Yan. So nakikita nyo ang sketch. Minib Ang photograph kasi hindi niya na may measure yung binibigay ang measurement. Pero ang sketch, pwede niyang i-project yung measurement, ang distances ng uh, evidence from each other. So yan ang paggawa. And always remember, when you make a sketch, no, face, when you are at the crime scene, uh, you face the north direction and start your sketch. Face the north, and start your sketching. Now, if you have no compass, then you can do the manual uh, identification of where is the north direction. <coughs> to identify the north direction, face the east. No? So you face the east direction and at your left is the north. Okay, Face the east and at your left is your north. So, kailangan harapin mo ang north pag nag sketch ka. Okay? That is the rule. Kaya ito, meron siyang north direction dito. So, ang sketcher, andito siya. Dito siya nakatayo. Yan. Okay? He's facing the north direction. So, yan. So, pwede kang gumamit ng legend kasi hindi mo pa may drawing yan. Pero itong box na ito, yan. Yan ay wooden cabinet. Ang square na yan is chair. Okay? Pwede ring letter. So, pag A, that is the victim. Yan. So, yan ang paggawa. Yan ang legend na tinatawag. Okay? So, ito rin yung mga information na kailangan mo. Neighborhood sketch. Ito naman is yung location ng crime scene. Yan. 
nakikita nyo yan, Alayaan Avenue, ito yung crime scene. Ini-sketch mo yung uh, neighborhood, yung places near the crime scene. Okay? Yan. So, the other one is perspective or drawing or respective drawing. Isa naman is a 3D talagang uh, para ito sa mga magagaling mag-draw. Ah, yan, talagang 3D. No? Yung uh, sketch niya. Okay? So, next, as part of the procedure in making a sketch, write down all measurements. Fill in all the details on your rough sketch at the crime scene. Final sketch may be prepared at the office. Keep the rough sketch even when you have your completed the final sketch. Indicate the north direction with an arrow. Draw the final sketch to scale. Yeah. Yeah. Ito, ah, ah, kasi meron namang minimeasure mo pag nakakanda ka ng sketch, minimeasure yan. No? Meron kang measure. Ayan. So, pag nag-measure ka, sample ito yung evidence, ito yung victim. Ayan. So, merong measure yan. So, minimation mo gaano kalayo yung evidence na yan. Example, firearm to the victim, minimation mo yan. Kung ang measurement niya is 1 meter, ilagay mo yan. No? Pero remember this, pag gumagawa ka ngayon ng uh, final sketch, kailangan i-measure mo yan ng tama. So, pwede kang gumamit ng uh, tawag dyan na uh, uh, conversion. So, pwede mo kasi pag gumagawa ka ng S, coupon ban ang ginagamit mo. So, hindi ka naman pwedeng mag-measure ng 1 meter dyan. So, pwede mong sabihin, 1 centimeter is equivalent to 1 meter. Yan. 2 centimeter, uh, yan. So, pag uh, mag-measure ka sa final sketch mo, mag-measure ka ng 1 centimeter at iyan ay 1 meter. Okay? Ayan. So, draw the final sketch to scale. Okay? So, pwede mong i-convert yan. Alright. Next is, indicate the place in the sketch as well as the person who drew it. Kaya ilagay mo yung pangalan mo sa sketcher. Use key capital letters at the alphabet for listing down more or less normal parts of accessories of the place and numbers of four items of evidence. Indicate the position, location, and relationship of the objects. Methods or system of locating object. Yan, ito yung mapping na tinatawag. Okay, crime scene mapping or measurement. So, paano natin i-locate yung position and relationship of the object? You use this uh, uh, techniques. So, baseline. So, kung ito yung uh, object or evidence, Yan, ito yung wall for example. So, you measure from that wall going to the uh, evidence that is baseline. So, yun lang naman. Then, so next is rectangular. Kung ito yung uh, evidence, these are the fixed point. Yan, so, fixed point. Kung merong poste dyan sa labas, o kahoy dyan na naka-fix point, then dyan ang basis mo. So, ito yung evidence. You measure it straight going there, then another there to form a square. Yan. So, na-measure mo ito is 11, ito is 8.7 feet. Kung feet ang ginamit mo. Okay? Triangulation. Ito yung pinaka-best. So, yan. So, you are going in one direction to form a triangle. So, dito ang fixed point mo. Diyan, then point it there. Yan. Okay? Polar or grid methods. Yan. You are making an angle. Okay? Yan. Ang straight is pa ganyan. Ang polar or grid coordinates, pinukuha mo yung kanyang angle. Okay? Yan. Alright. Another procedure in making a sketch. Critical measurements such as a skid marks should be checked by two investigators. Measurements should be harmony or in centimeters, inches, yards, meters mixed in one sketch. Use standard symbols in the sketch. Yeah, like the square, huwag kang gumawa ng sarili mong uh, shape. Show which way the door swing. Yeah, palabas or paunig. 
show which arrow the direction of the stairways. Recheck the sketch for clarity, accuracy, and scale and title. And the classification of the sketch must be established. So again, yung rough sketch, yan yung ginagawa sa crime scene. And the finished sketch, yan ang uh, final. Pero again, kailangan mong itago pa rin at i-preserve yung rough sketch. Then parts of a sketch, we have the title, the body or the sketch, yan yung buo, the compass direction, the nature of the case, the location of incident, date and time of incident, name of victim, name of suspect, legend, signatory, and date or time the sketch was made. So pag tignan nyo dito, yan, itong isang example. Yan, nakita nyo, yan yung direction, yan, yan yung name, nature of the case, rape, yan, date, yan, legend, okay, okay, yan. Makita nyo. The parts of a sketch. There are 11. And 11. Pero pwede mo rin dagdagan. Alright. Procedures on lifting fingerprints. Dusting for latent fingerprints. Pour a small amount of powder into a piece of paper or a shallow bowl. Touch the tip of the brush to the powder being careful not to pick up too much. Apply the powder on the surface gently, and when a print begins to appear, uh, anyway, you have your uh, fingerprint. So you had your fingerprint, I should say. So, alam nyo na yan. Lifting of fingerprints, pakibasa na lang yan. Pull of approximately 3 inches of the tape from the roll. Yeah, pakibasa na lang yan. You have your fingerprint subject. Then taking of plain impression. Yeah, yung pag uh, nagre-record tayo ng fingerprint. Do not roll the fingers when inking or taking the impression. Use the same position. Ink the right thumb by pressing straight forward and ink the remaining four fingers. Sa ngayon, meron na tayong technology. Kahit walang ink, may re-record na yan sa computer. Repeat the same. So I hope you know how the procedure of uh, getting or recording prints. Yan. Remember this. Uh, May mga kaso na kailangan ng SOCO assistance. So, hindi kaya ng uh, uh, police station yung local police natin. Kasi pag may crime, it is the local uh, police who have jurisdiction over the investigation. Ngayon, it is the duty of the investigating team of a local police station to assess the crime scene and establish if it is a sensational crime uh, or the crime involved or by its nature, kailangan mo ng SOCO assistance kasi kulang kayo ng gamit kasi ang kasong involved is hindi yan just just. No? Yan. Kung ang investigating team through its team leader na assess mo yung crime scene, talagang kailangan mo ng SOCO assistance kasi they will provide technical assistance kasi ang SOCO is a specialized unit na talagang uh, they are equipped with the tools of investigation. Meron silang uh, uh, talagang uh, uh, high-end uh, training, equipment, tools. Yeah. Kaya pag ang investigating team uh, nakita niya that it needs technical assistance from the SOCO team, then kailangan niyang mag-request. So, anong gagawin mo? In cases, ang gagawin lang ng SOCO team is to assist the investigating team. Pagkatapos naman nilang i-process yung crime scene, it turn over pa rin nila. Kung ano man ang nakolek nila, ah, they will turn over it to the investigating team. At ang investigating team, sila pa rin ang magre-release sa crime scene at sila ang magtutuloy sa second phase of investigation that is follow up investigation okay yeah so in cases where the crime scene needs a special processing due to its significance or because of its sensational nature the scene of the crime operation specialist of the crime laboratory shall be requested if the situation involves a clandestine drug laboratory biological weapons, 
and the appropriate should be contacted prior to entering the crime scene. So, kailangan ng SOCO assistance in the following circumstances. Okay? Ngayon, pag natapos na na-process ang crime scene, the next process is release the crime scene. Okay? Release the crime scene. Kasi ang crime scene, hindi mo naman pwedeng i-cordon yan forever. Yan. Pati crime scene, uh, walang forever yan. Kailangan i-release yan. Okay? So, ensure that appropriate inventory has been provided before the release of the crime scene. So, release the crime scene with the notion that there is only one chance to perform job correctly and completely. Release the crime scene. Release is accomplished only after completion of the final survey and proper documentation. So those are the general investigative procedures in the PNP that you should follow. The last part is the release of the crime scene. So you see, uh, yeah. so you see, uh, we discuss as far as the uh, investigative procedures general investigative procedures are concerned we start from the time the procedures from the time there is a report or incident reported uh, where it involves the functions of the first responders and the investigating team then followed by the recording of the crime scene uh, search for evidence marking of evidence until the release of the crime scene. Okay? So, yan yung discussion natin ngayon. The general investigative procedure. So, that's the end of my discussion for this topic and we shall continue it uh, in the next presentation. Okay? So, I hope this material will in any way helps you to understand the flow of our discussion. Okay? So, I end with that. Uh, by saying, God bless us all and let us learn as one. Let us all have discipline. Let us all uh, be good and safe always. Okay? So, again, thank you and uh, uh, be uh, updated for whatever discussions or instructions that I will give. Okay? Thank you and keep safe. Okay?